As the news editor of Board Game Geek, I cover games from across the spectrum of game design from simple to complex. But my personal days lean much more towards the streamlined and minimal. Games with few rules in which I just don't have to remember all the details about what phases things take place in and how things are set up and so on because my memory is not great. I just want to focus on playing the game instead of having to remember how to play the game. I want to focus on the interactivity with the other players. I want to be concerned more with what they're doing and what I need to do to respond to them. So the games that I enjoy tend to have very minimal rules and the complexity often comes just from having special powers or something where they're on the cards in your hand. And so I can ignore most of them and just see things as they come up. I get little pieces and over time you absorb everything and you start to gather the strategy of the game more from the experience of playing it. It seems much more valuable to me than trying to parse out the rules and figure out the details of the different systems and subsystems and how they all relate together and that's for other players and not for me. So I get very curious to see how game mechanisms are introduced into games for mainstream gamers. An audience that doesn't necessarily know about hobby games, they don't go to the stores and buy games based on mechanisms, but instead based on other qualities. So you have a title like 2016's Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, a deck building game that people who are buying it in Barnes & Noble probably have never heard that term and they don't care about the term. They just get the sense as you're playing the game that, oh, I'm getting new characters who I'm hanging out with and new objects, I'm learning new spells, and I'm putting all those together into my deck, which is me, which is my experience, and I'm using them. And yes, it's deck building, but it's more of a thematic use of it where I don't have to, I'm not thinking of it as deck building, I'm just thinking of me being a wizard learning spells. So I was super curious to see what GameRight would be doing when they announced Abandon All Artichokes from designer Emma Larkins. This is a card game for two to four players that has a deck building element to it, along with a deck destruction element. GameRight calls this the deck wrecking game, which makes perfect sense because you start with a deck of 10 artichokes and you don't want them in your deck, or rather you don't want them in your hand. You're fine having artichokes in your deck, your whole goal is to, at the end of your turn, draw a new hand of five cards, and if you have no artichokes in that hand, you win. That's it. Simple, straightforward. The only complexity comes through the card powers that are introduced through various veggies in the game. Artichokes do nothing on their own. They just take up space in your hand, uh, giving you a little smirky look, or maybe a grin. They're happy to be there. They don't want to go away, but you don't want them there, so you have to figure out how you're going to avoid them. Here's the setup for Abandon All Artichokes. Each player starts with their own deck of 10 artichoke cards, which you will undoubtedly shuffle, even though they are all the same. It's just an instinct. But you start with five cards in hand, you shuffle the deck of garden cards and lay out five cards into the garden row. And on a turn, you are going to start by refilling the garden row because the previous player has taken one or more of those cards. You are going to harvest one of those cards into your hand. Let's say I do this one. I'll take the corn. You then play as many cards as you wish from your hand, but artichokes don't do anything. So all I can do is play the corn that I just picked up. In this case, I play this card with an artichoke. I then put a card from my the garden row on top of my deck. So I have now actually acquired two garden cards this turn. And then if I'm through playing, I've played all that I want to or can, I discard my hand, and then I draw a new hand of five cards and I'm ready for the next turn. So other players are going to take their turns. My turn comes around again. I'm going to, again, refill this row, take something else in my hand, and then play all that I wish to or can. In this case, the carrot, as your only action, you can compost that card with two artichokes. So the carrot's a one-shot use. I got two artichokes out of my deck. They're out of the game completely. I have this, I can't play the leak, but I don't really need to play the leak because it's not useful at the beginning of the game. So with the leak, you reveal the top card of the opponent's deck, and you can either discard it into their discard pile or put it into your hand. Well, at the beginning of the game, everyone only has artichokes. 
So the leak doesn't do much at first, but later on it can start stealing their good stuff, putting it in your hand, and you can use it immediately because you can keep playing things from your hand until you run out or choose to stop playing. And all the cards have this aspect where they're good at some times, they're not good at others. It's a real you know, choice over what you're trying to get. Sometimes you're building up your deck, Sometimes the carrot just goes away and is gone. The eggplant works the same way, where you compost the artichoke along with this card. So if I had the eggplant, artichoke goes, uh, eggplant goes, and now each player passes two cards to their left, which again, at the beginning of the game, just means you're each passing two artichokes, so there's no effect. But later, if you have someone who is doing well and getting rid of lots of artichokes, there's a good chance they have picked up a hand with not all the artichokes. Or you have done something like use a beat card and taken away artichokes from them. And then you want other people to pass artichokes pass back to them. So with a beat, you and an opponent each reveal a random card. So I'll pick a card at random from an opponent's hand. They'll pick one from my hand. If we both reveal artichokes, as in the early game, they get composted. Done. Great. Otherwise, we swap them. So if I have a handful of artichokes and I suspect that they don't, I give them an artichoke and I get something good that I can then use immediately. Hmm. So all different things. The peas. You reveal two cards from the deck. You choose one of them and put it in your discard pile, and an opponent gets the other one. Well, maybe I'll give them an onion, because with the onion, you compost an artichoke from your hand, and then you put this card on top of someone else's discard pile. So it's a one-shot use to take the onion. So if I give it to them, well, maybe they'll give it right back to me, or they'll give it to someone else. We'll see. Of course, if it's a two-player game, they have to give it to you. The pepper, put a card from your discard pile on top of your deck. Well, and again, the beginning of the game, that's not great because all you have is artichokes. But once you are using these cards, if I have a beet, hmm, let's see, a beet and a pepper in my hand, I can use the beet. If they don't draw the pepper, I can play the pepper to put the beet back on top of my deck and I'll have it again next turn in order to use again. You can do that with peas as well. Other cards in the game. You have broccoli and potatoes. So broccoli, compost an artichoke if your hand has three or more artichokes. So you reveal your hand, say, yep, broccoli, three artichokes, one gets composted, this gets put in the discard pile, these are still in my hand, so I can do something else with them. I can play them with a corn in order to get the corn power. I can get rid of one with the onion and pass the onion along. With the potato, you reveal the top card of your deck, if it's an artichoke, you compost it, otherwise you discard it. Well, combine that with the pepper, I can play the pepper to put an artichoke on the top of my deck. And then I can play the potato, and I know that I'm composting that artichoke. There's an overview of Abandon All Artichokes, which I played 10 times now on a review copy from GameRite, mostly with two players, but also with three and four. The gameplay changes a bit based on the player count, mostly because the value of the cards themselves changes based on the number of players in the game. With peas, I'm gonna reveal two cards and I keep one for myself. In the discard pile, I give one to another player's discard pile. Well, with more players, I can scatter the benefit to other people instead of each of us gaining a card each time, which is great. With the beats, you wanna target the player who's winning. With the onion, you're, again, you're going to give it away to someone else. So you can give it to whoever you think is not doing well or who might give it back to you if you think they'll be nice to you in return. The eggplant works a little weirdly because of course you only pass cards to your neighbor. You don't get to control who's passing what. So you can't necessarily target someone who's winning, but you just hope that their neighbor can target them based on whatever's in their hand at the time. So there's little nuances based on the player count, but more than that, there's just nuances on the cards themselves, and you see the value of them more and more as you play, and you encounter different winning situations. Because again, the winning condition is only at the end of your turn, drawing a hand with no artichokes in it. Doesn't matter what the rest of your deck is. So I've seen games where people win with two cards left in their deck. That's it. You get down to that. If you just have a small number of cards, if you have five or fewer cards, you pick up everything. You don't even have a deck. As you play cards, you place them in your discard pile. At the end of your turn, you discard everything and shuffle and then draw a new hand. 
So you can get down where you have very few cards in your hand, and as long as you get rid of that last artichoke, there you go. I pick up my hand, and I win. Alternatively, you go the other route with cards like peas or corn, where you are adding many more cards to your deck and trying to dilute the artichokes. Now, I had one game where I won with six artichokes in my deck, but I hit this cluster of things where there were no artichokes, and so I won. And that's thanks partly to the use of the peppers, where you can take a card from your discard pile and put it on top of your deck. I'd use two peppers, put two cards on top. By chance, the other three underneath were also garden cards. Victory. Didn't matter what anything else was. So you have variety in how things play out and in terms of what people are trying to do and what cards are people's favorites. That definitely happens as you play with people and you see what they like and you sort of know that and you can play off of it. One of my opponents loves peas, loves getting the option of what to add to their deck, even though they're helping me at the same time by giving me something. Whatever it is, even if it's not useful, like Broccoli in the late game is not useful because you need three artichokes in your hand in order to get rid of one of them. So late game is no good, except again, it dilutes my deck, which is good. So you have the, the early mid late game in a 10 to 20 minute game. The games are relatively short. And yet you do have this early mid late stage where things are valuable and that things change over time. And you have things like carrots, that are just the one shot use and then they're out of the deck and the eggplant works the same way. And so the onion, you give that away. These are all one shot things. So you're, you are going for a small deck. Everything is going away. You're not building up a deck to use powers over and over again, but just doom, done, 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 trying to shift everything out. With corn, you're going the other way where I must play a corn with an artichoke. So that means I can't get rid of it. It's going to go into my discard pile, but I'm adding something else to it. And when you play corn, it goes on top of your deck. So again, if you have lots of corn and artichokes in hand, you may have a multi-corn artichoke hand or one corn, you pick up another corn, I use them both. I put two cards on top of my deck. Maybe I have a pepper to pull the corn back as well or something else. And then suddenly I'm stacking my deck and really increasing the odds that I'm going to win. Although it's up to chance depending on the probability of whatever is left in your deck at the time. So it's not necessarily a strategic game in that you're going to have lots of random things happen. And you've got the beats where you're just drawing cards at random out of someone's hand and maybe you get the lone artichoke in their hand or you get the lone action card in your hand, which I've had happen. One action, one garden card and four artichokes and they draw that one card out. My turn, my next turn just became nothing. It didn't, you know, you pick up one card each turn so you have something to do, but you want to build things over time, at least some players do, and then put everything together and make it work. It's this fascinatingly streamlined deck building, deck wrecking combination that works with very simple rules. The only difficulty that I've found in a four player game with new players is it can be slow because you're initially processing everything and seeing how it works. And I'm going to draw something and I, okay, I got to read, how does this work? Okay, I got to do that and do this thing. And then it may go a little slow depending on the players. And the next players are just like slow, 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 slow. And I can go faster because I know all the cards. But if I'm not explaining what I'm doing, then the other play people are just watching me go and they don't know what I'm doing. So they learn nothing. So it's this hard mix of learning the basics of the rules, pick up a card, play stuff, discard, draw a hand. Very straightforward. And you have a little turn guide to help you remember what to do. And on the other side is an explanation of what things are named. So ideally it's all covered in these little elements, but it can go slow with four people who don't know what they're doing. And so it can be as slow relatively, but if you're just doing things and no one understands what you're doing, then you're not helping them learn. That was a bad, bad experience on my part. Or I was not explaining things clearly enough while moving quickly, explaining why I might want to do something. Instead, I always prefer the learn by doing school, but not everyone is like that. Some people like things explained to them. So there you go. Quick run through of Abandon All Artichokes, a uh, very tiny game. It is, it says heartless. 
it's only heartless mostly through the beats. That's the thing that really is just like, you stick it to someone where they thought they were gonna have some awesome turn. Oh, or the leak. Let me not forget the leak, which is generally my favorite card, mostly because the first time we played, I got a leak because it sounded good, and I hit with uh, the opponent's deck and I stole their leak, so then I got to use the leak, their leak, because mine was discarded, and they used their leak and I stole something else, and I ended up stealing like three cards away from them over time, which again, juices, juices up my deck, lots of non-artichokes in it, which just increases the odds of me winning. It's very simple, and yet there's lots to think about in this simple time frame, in this simple structure. And it's kind of remarkable. Uh, the, the developer at Game Riot, Jason Schneider, said that he worked a lot with Emma Larkins, went through lots of different iterations to try to get this mix of involved simplicity. That wasn't the term he used, I think, but that's what this is. The structure is very simple. The rules are very simple. And yet, as you start putting things together in these little combinations, you have choices to make that are interesting, fun choices. Game's over, then you shuffle up and play again. Because it's just this nice little burst of how things work together based on chance, what's available in the garden row, what happens depending on the odds of whatever's in your hand. All these little chance elements coming together gives you a chance to win out of nowhere when you least expect it. It can happen. There you go. Enjoy.